Hello, uh, I'm Helen Palmer. I, uh, I'm a senior scientist at ATTP, at TU Veen, um, with Vera Bullman. And I'm very happy to take this opportunity to celebrate the Lustrum event. Um, five years, yeah, fun, um, five years Vera has been at ATTP. And um, I, to give an example of my work, I'm going to read from my forthcoming novel called Pleasure Beach, which is something I've been working on for a few years. Um, it's a kind of feminist reworking of James Joyce's Ulysses set in my hometown of Blackpool, in the Northwest of England, and in the year 1999. And it has, uh, it's a queer love story also, has uh, three 19 year old young women. And um, I've made a, a table for the novel, which you can see on the screen there, uh, which contains um, various uh, categories, which in which all the information in which the novel is kind of based upon and structured around is in this table. So you can have a look at that. Um, there's always a title, Homeric title, scene, hour, voice, ride, and that's at which ride is at this theme park. Um, which is called the Pleasure Beach in Blackpool. Um, substance, organ, symbol or shape, colour, a formula, chemical or mathematical, um, and an art or a technique, sometimes called an action. So this is a work in progress, this table. Um, so I will just read some sections from the chapters. Okay, chapter one. Sea is to sky as sigh is to sea. Sea is to sigh as sky is to sea. And what a sea, what a scene, as if seen from above. Sea e'en from above and not from inside these eye holes. But the cider inside her, inside these eye holes, we sadly now are stuck. Stuck fast. Head hurts. Brightness hurts. Noise hurts. The wind is nice though. Carefully now, weaving one's weary way around pavement crawlers, morning drunks and druggies, stepping over wind whips, dervishing plastic bags and scrunched up chippy paper, splats of sick, upended boxes of unfinished doner kebab and chips, seagulls squawk and circle above. Take me away, O oh monstrous inhuman weirdos, and drop me in the cold grey sea, sigh, sea, please. One gull, perching on the railing, stares directly at you with its immovable lichen-coloured dinosaur egg, I. I, I, but I, dabai, the I, unblinking, unflinching. I know what you did last night, says the eye. I saw it all because I'm prehistoric, see. It sees all, sees all, all seeing, all knowing. Squawk. From chapter four. To enter Alice's Wonderland, you have to be eaten. You and your entire world has to disappear through the Cheshire cat's mouth. The only organ that can regenerate itself is the liver. Liver, a giver, a liver of life. From Blackpool to Liverpool, the city of the Blackpool to the city of the Pool of Light. A man with an arm round his toddler daughter, young and easily Freudian, is at this very moment sitting in the front train car and heading directly into the tooth-fringed black hole of the Cheshire cat's mouth. Nonsense with teeth. Don't be scared of the Cheshire cat, for he is nothing but a grin. Man and child together on the Alice ride, thinking about the city of life and the city of death, the pool of life and the pool of death. It was all a dream, of course. The tubular tunnel is rotating around itself. The giant playing cards are peeling off the walls. Are we upside down or is it an optical illusion? And look, here is a giant Alice, the proto Alice, illuminating the dark. But we digress. 
particularly and universally, of course, here in this case with the pleasure and the beach, what we are actually talking about is the meeting of solid and liquid, the waves that lap on the sand, the grains which are tiny crystals which together form a liquid which burns to become glass, which is transparent like a liquid and mimics the hardened liquid of ice. And so on and so forth, the phrase mimicking nothing but the pouring forth of analogy, perhaps ad infinitum, we aren't sure yet. Let's see. from chapter five. You are both newborn and ancient, or Olga and Rachel spar while tripping over the miseducation of Lauren Hill. Everything is everything. What is meant to be will be. You see what a task this is becoming, or equally, you don't. Everything is everything. Lauren Hill, she knew it, I begat this, everything is everything. Sounds like a tautology to me. A tautology is the same, is when the same thing is said more than once in different words. Everything is everything. But is the first everything the same as the second everything? What is the word is anyway? What is is? Is asking what is is the same as asking what is the being of being? Ha, did we think we would be getting this philosophical? Not at all. But look, listen, that's what I'm trying to say. The hardest things are actually the easiest. Everything is everything. They are the same, but they are also not the same. Don't get me started on time. We don't have enough of it. Back to Lauren Hill, mirroring the hugest and shiniest, darkest of darkest eyes, pronounces the words carefully. Flipping in the ghetto in the dirty mattress, you can't match this rapper slash actress more powerful than two Cleopatras. You know that's us, don't you? Two Cleopatras. Together, we could, you know, the world. It's there for the taking. We could, if we wanted to. They are each other's anchor. They're walking through the pleasure beach, just looking at everything in awe, sometimes guffawing so hard they could almost vomit, stepping more and more slowly and carefully until they reach the queue for the big one. Whose idea was this again? The world's already the big one. A fucking great roller coaster, -er, under, -er, over, -er, upside down, -er, hook, line, and sinker. -er. Did Forrest Gump say that? No, wait, he said something else. Ah, yeah, that's it. Life is like a box of chocolates. And in saying the word somewhere, somewhere a box of chocolates is opened, each one a different flavour, texture, colour, sensation, each one its own planet, its own galaxy, its own solar system, the stuff that's inside of stuff, stars inside stars inside stars, starry-eyed, star-crossed, starry-wheeled, Catherine-wheeling, unstoppable forces of synthesised stuff. It's all connected, golden spires, silver webs, garden gnomes, they know. Stuff inside stuff inside stuff. We are no longer teenagers, but are suddenly centuries old. We are Futurians, white clad and silver clad alien beings consuming nothing but pills for food and pills for sleep and pills for moods like crying and happy and excited and love and sex and then pills for dying and then more pills to stay dead. See? It doesn't matter if you're on drugs or not. A theme park can be the entire world, just as the entire world can be a theme park. Panepiphany, panepiphemera, panepiphenomenon. Pan what now? Just stop trying to be clever and listen. I'm trying to explain that the world is a playground. The playground is the world. Nothing exists beyond the trashy flashes of the lights and the zooming sugar rushes that will become metaphors for the coming to fruition of the mainstreamizing of lesbian culture, a story set in our richer Southern sister and televised for the nation in 2004. But wait, 
We are getting ahead of ourselves. We don't even know who we are. But what we are saying is that this is it. Fruition? You mean like fruit? No. And yes. Here we go again. Fruition. A working definition by Olga Adesi and Rachel Watkins, the lotus eaters, plus a miscellany of stimuli, a stimuseleny of mimuli, a screamuseleny of muesli, etc. Right, so there's this image. I reckon it's quite famous. I've seen it in magazines and stuff. It's of a woman unzipping her jeans and a whole load of stuff is spilling out. It's like a cornucopia. Berries, leaves, vines, fruit. It's really beautiful. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think so. That's what I'm feeling like right now every time I say a word or every time you say a word. All this stuff pours out. Not words or maybe also words, but at the same time stuff. Oh my God, that sounds brill. What stuff is coming out of my mouth right now? Mm, it's like a kind of tangleweed. I don't know if that's even a real thing, but it looks like that. Almost like cartoon vines all tangled together with cartoon thorns and roses. Stop and look at her for a minute. There, from her mouth, small round petals escaping in a cluster. Pale pink, pale blue, and then darker colours of lilac and fuchsia. All mixed together, pearly petals in a dense mass moving slowly like a wave of honey. Beauty. I'm transfixed. Wow, I can see it too. Those petals are familiar. They look like, hang on brain, we can get there. Rhododendron petals. The hilarity of this word hits me, thwack, in the face. What are you laughing at? It's, it's your words. They're like petals. They're like rhododendrons. She is also now laughing uncontrollably. What is it now? It's just dendrons. What a word. What are dendrons? And each time she says dendrons, actual dendrons shoot from her mouth. These are straight tree trunk like branches, but horizontal with multicolored leaves, again in a cartoon style. And when she speaks more slowly, the viscous wave like outpouring of petals. And when she looks at me, silent for a second, lips slightly pursed, a lotus flower grows. If I kiss her, I will eat this lotus flower. Sacred Lotus, Nelumbo nucifera, common name, water lily. One single flower, pale yellow center, fading outwards to delicate white, slender, gentle pink tipped petals, bloom. Around her lips, flat green lily pads. Your face is the smooth center of a pond or lake. Never have I ever. What magic is this to bestir such depths to put one hand in cool green water. Touch the surface of water lip skin just once, twice, thrice, in slightly different and overlapping places, diffracting circles, ripples upon, ripples upon. But no, it snaps away and disappears before I can move a muscle. And then, of course, muscles, the fibres, the hairs that twitch, the flanks of racehorses, straps of flesh under skin, expand and contract, the heave and the hoe, squeeze another language out right there. We need a name for this. For what? This language. Her eyes get it. Waterfalls of, beams of. But no. The eyes could do, slash are doing, a whole other thing, but that is not for now. I speak and mouth speak is too much. I speak is another dimension. Well, there's an ancient Greek philosopher, Diogenes Laertes. Hang on, not him. He wrote about it. Chrysippus. He said that if you say something, it passes through your lips, literally. It's about things being literal, not metaphorical. Everything that you can think of that's a metaphor is actually real. Crispus. 
And sure enough, a concatenation of crisps burst forth from her mouth with the word, as the word, dancing in the manner of crockery items in Disney's Beauty and the Beast when they sing Be Our Guest. Hysteria, utter. The hysteria catches a whiff of itself and manifests as steam, as from a kettle, slowly whistling from the top of her head. Uh-oh, head. Where is this headed, triple-headed? It's all a dance of the literal and the crispus and we laugh as the crisps dance their way gaily into a formation of a giant cat's face cheshire's cousin lancashire crisp puss a giant cat face shimmering in the air. Its eyes are two red Pringles tubes spinning like Catherine wheels. Its teeth are the jagged ends of knickknacks and broken monster munch. Striped tigerish fur made up of spiraling skips in lines like a football field against lines of shimmying watsits. Marmalade crispus, magisterial, the cat we worship. As crispus fades back to the important business of naming, what it is, what we are doing. Literal. Everything is literal. That's it. Literal. Ah, and sure enough, dancing rubbish threatens. You smell it before you see it, but a snap of the fingers and a new word must be pronounced to ward away from the literal procession. Fruition. That's it. That's the name of our language. And we are speaking what? Fruition. We speak. And it comes to fruition. Fruition is perfect when it comes to fruition. When I come to fruition, from her lips are cherries, bananas, grapes, pineapples. We have found it, the opening up of an orifice and the pouring forth of bount bounteous fruit. Wait, are we just actually talking an orgasm? Don't think it because it will happen. Don't think it. When you think something, it passes through your... Are you thinking what I'm thinking? And such are the unwritten, unspoken, unnoticed spidery webs and chains of power and desire that line the air so thickly it's amazing we can breathe a clear breath if one could tint those lines. We would have amazing kaleidoscope of philia right there. Like tinting the eyeballs with fluorescent juice, then sneezing out neon into a tissue later. Chapter 18. And holding sticky summer hands together, Olga and Rachel walk away, receding into the topping street of the past. Dark hair and blonde hair, spectacle and theory, young and wan, and yan and ying and yin and yang. Delirious with hangovers and sleeplessness and love-hate, love-hate, love. Half sparring as Rachel spouts one half of a half-baked theory, and Olga retorts by spouting the other half of the half-baked theory, and together they bake full theories like loaves firebrands with fire loaves sleeping in baskets in hearts which would blast into fragrant flowery fruition at any moment. They say you and I could take over the world because they are aware that together they are the queer yes and the queer no. But the fact that it is never clear exactly who is the yes and who is the no is the thing that creates the magic. Rachel and Olga live happily ever after, of course, which means for one summer, of course, and the living happily ever after appears to be dependent upon the fact that the frequency with which they say to one another, you and I could take over the world, decreases in inverse proportion to their increasing age, 19 years and three months, to 19 years and four months in Olga's case, and 19 years and 11 months to 20 years and zero months in Rachel's case, and in direct proportion to the likeliness of them actually taking over the world. Olga and Rachel know from the beginning that they cannot be together forever, 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 ever. Those repeated lines from the outcast song, Mrs. Jackson, which is then played every fucking where the following year, the gray and new boned millennium from which the gray and new boned millennial youth will hatch and spawn and spring and multiply like snowflakes. Thank you for listening um, and uh, happy lustrum to Vera and um, yeah, celebration times at ATTP.